Uh, I'd like to talk about one of the challenges that we are facing worldwide, not just in Malaysia but worldwide, and that is the growing xenophobia, uh, hate speech and racism, even looking at Malaysia in Malaysia. I think we are allowing hate speech to run away and we are not doing anything to contain it in Malaysia. The answer is education. We need to remember, as they say, words kill. And yet, when you look at the internet, you look at uh, uh, publications, we are appalled at what we are seeing by way of hate speech. So this is the one thing that we must try and contain. And of course, it also it comes out of leadership. It requires leadership. It requires our leaders to change the way they speak as well. This is of critical importance because let me tell you, if we allow this to fester and carry on, it will lead to hate crimes. Look at what is said about the LGBT community in Malaysia. It is appalling and the people do it, leaders even do it because it burnishes their own personal Islamic credentials. That's why they make these statements about that very oppressed community. And it has resulted in violence against them. So it is a fact. Hate speech leads to hate crime. And this is something we can all do something about. And I would urge the government to look at this seriously. Because I'm talking about courage, I'm talking about the IPCMC. I think it is very clear that every time there is a hiccup, the government delays a bit. And when it's delayed, it looks like it's delayed forever. So far, the only thing they have done by way of reform of legislation is repealing the anti-fake news law. The Sedition Act is still there. IPCMC has not happened. Now, it is one of the things that have been promised for a long, long time. And it's good for the police. There are good policemen who have no problems with the IPCMC. And implement it the way they implemented EAIC, and it hasn't caused a problem. So I'd like to know who it is in PH who is standing in the way of the IPCMC. The second thing I want to talk about is SOSMA. There are 12 people who were recently ar arrested who are sitting there still, not knowing when they are going to face charges. And in fact, I went to see five of them. And they asked me, and they said, we fought so hard to bring this new government in. And now we are sitting under SOSMA. How is that happening? I couldn't answer that question. So these are the things I wanted to raise because look, we all talk about standing up for human rights. But while this government prevaricates on SOSMA, that also has been, by the way, delayed to next year. I don't know why. What is the difficulty in making bail, removing the bail provision and removing the 28-day uh, period of detention? What is the difficulty? Who is standing in the way? They use the word terrorism, and this is a worldwide phenomenon. The minute the authorities use the word terrorism, everybody backs off. But that is a mistake because it is an abuse of the word terrorism. There are real terrorists. We are not saying don't have security laws, you must. But they must be fair to these people. So while we are sitting here asking for people to stand up for human rights, there are people sitting inside whose human, right, whose human rights are suffering as we speak. And I blame the government. I do not blame anyone else. You said, I'm not on the streets. That may have to happen. That may have to happen. We may have to take to the streets if this government doesn't show the courage to do the right thing for human rights. Thank you very much.